All right, our uh, parts are coming in, and our last, I think, I hope it's our last bolt order, it's came in and allowed me to get this hanger in place. So now I'm working on getting ready to bring the axle in. Typically, I like to have the suspension all together on the axle and just bring it in and bolt it to the truck, but in this case, we had some work to do. These pins were busted. We had two of them that were broke. If I separate anything that's it's rusted too, it just makes it that much easier for it to actually move. See, we're starting to separate there. I'll try and go across the bottom. And there we go. This is the washer that squeezes the rubber in the eyelet. I think I need another, another chisel. You know, I got a bigger chisel than this, but I broke it on this guy's other truck. And I broke, and it was my favorite one. And I broke my favorite hammer on his truck. I'm pretty sure his trucks need to need to go away, not come back. Keep breaking my favorite tools. Come on. All right, we're making progress. All right, now we'll put you on the impact trying to turn it and I'm going to take the air hammer and hit it. It's not supposed to thread on like this but it's so rusty. Yeah you can see the deterioration right there of the bushing on the top. All right you get on the impact I'll get on the air hammer. tried and tried with the impact to the air hammer um he's trying to um chisel out the part of the bushing and still nothing so he's just gonna the have metal to... bolt is seized in the steel bushing so it's steel on steel rust and if i if i try and just spin the bolt i'm probably going to twist the the steel insert in the rubber. So I'm gonna try and heat up the insert and see if it'll pop loose with a hammer and not twist it. So we're using an air hammer down the center. I've tried to split this bushing with an air chisel and it's just way too long. All right, I'm gonna need some water so I can put this out. Okay.
You need more water? I never used any to begin oh, with. Oh, that's what you did. Well, torch some more. I'm just going to keep cutting away at the center. Just like I did on the other the center bolts. So you're going to want to get out of here because I'm going to be blowing crap towards you. Okay. Cover the soot. Well, we got it out. Can you see the end? I used the impact on one end. Well, quit moving it. <laughs> um, and I he, just, he used the air hammer. You see hammer. how deep we got down in there? Yeah. Torch and then air hammer. Yeah, here's all the, the bolt. I just kept blowing the, the center of the bolt out. Seems like it worked okay. Now we can pop this bushing out here. Yeah? I'm gonna get back because I'm sure that's still hot in there. Well, uh, that side's probably not too hot. Mm -hmm. I could probably do it better on that side. But... Come out? Eh. No? Kinda, yeah. I mean, it's there's some sticking out, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what needs to be done on these things for the next guy. So you don't have to fight it like I did. This turned into a soup sandwich real quick. Um, behind your feet. I move stuff out of the way when you were using the torch. Now, I'll put the inside one on so then that neoprene pushes against the rubber and isolates it. Okay. Alright, need the impact over there. Alright, next thing we gotta do. We've got to take that ratch strap loose. If we can't compress this. We want this to be at right height. So we're going to let this down a little bit. All right. But we're going to go in until both of these are flush. Let me switch hands. Ready? I guess. Well, that took a lot longer than I hoped, but it's done. It's in. I don't see anything else wrong. All the rest of them seem to be okay. So next step is we're going to get the front drive axle, and we're going to sneak it in underneath here with the grade all. Hopefully get it right in this area and bring it up. This is the part that goes underneath the axle and gets everything sandwiched together. And there's several things to make mention of this. Is One, this side is taller than this side reason being is as the axle tube comes over this way it kind of starts to roll and drop down so this part is lower and also it's pitched front to back so the pinion of the axle is going to be tipped up slightly so that's where this is going to come from this and the top perch are cut they're not exactly even they're slightly taller in the front so it's important that you pay attention which one goes where because ours goes like this because our axle starts to drop down and we need the pinion kicked up in the front so now we can put this together we're going to snug it up done on this side we're going to put the bump stop in and i got the bolt never seized and the bump stop greased this side and we also have this bracket that goes on this side Gives it a pretty good coating this way instead of 
like painting it on. Just dab it. So we've got this all snugged up right now and the airbag is in. So the next thing we're doing is making sure we're, we're set correct side to side. So we're going to get a measurement. This is right where the step is in the axle, which is where it's the bearing stops. And that is 14. Good eyes. 14 and 11 sixteenths. Yeah. So we want to go the other side and measure that one. Let's see what it is. It's 14, 11, 16. Um, this was after going back and forth a couple times. You look here to the track bar. What I'm doing is manipulating the shims on this side whether so I can pull the axle one way or the other. And then once it's where we want it, at right height. All right, so basically where it sits like this in the airbag got, would have air in it. The distance from here, from here to here is your right height. So when you set it like this, that pan hard bar, track bar, whatever you want to call it, would be almost horizontal. So when I manipulate the shims, depending on which side of this, this bracket you put the shims on, we'll either pull it or push it or pull it. So if I add shims in here, it moves it that way. If I take shims away, it moves it this way. So that's what I've done. It took me twice because the second t after the first measurement, I added uh, shims instead of taking them away. So now we are correct. Our our measurement from where we want to be is correct. So now we are ready to cinch everything down tight. So I better make mention the fact that I'll run the the suspension up and down through its travel before I cinch everything and check it again, just to make sure everything's set just right where we want it. I think we're good. All right, when I'm putting shocks in, the first thing I do is clean the paint off the shock, off the threads. Makes it a whole lot easier. It's easier if I can push it up in there tight enough. God, these are some stiff shocks. Okay. That'll do. Okay, now down here, since this is a stud that uh, doesn't get replaced every time, we'll put some never seize on it. Socket and impact, so I'll do it the other way. I cleaned off the studs with the wire wheel and the threads as well. That way, we know it's going to sit on there where it belongs. Bunch of crud in there. Okay, call that one good. I'll just do the same thing the other side. So we're changing this fitting out because this used to be like this, and it was it was pinched real hard and uh, restricted. So we're going to change it out for a ninety, and that should. Make it much cleaner and not pinched. I can almost reach that far. It's kind of downhill. Uh, let's see. 
want this to be nice sweeping. Yeah, I guess that would be alright. And all the way. I prefer to use these over again instead of uh, a push the leaks. Seems like they're always a problem. And I always hold in on this so it doesn't slide out. So the way this thing works, this is a relay valve. So um, this port right here has air pressure coming in from the air tank just sitting here. This line comes from the foot valve, your, your brake pedal. When you step on your brake pedal, it sends air in through here, which is exactly what a relay valve is. It is something smaller source controlling a larger source. So as you're driving, if you would lose air pressure to your service brake side, then this modulation line would start modulating and releasing the air pressure to the park brake side of the chamber and bring you to a stop. So this will be, this is the spring brake side. So all we have to do for the rear of the other axle, because we're adding um, parking brakes to uh, the rear axle as well. So since we're gonna do that, because you know this is gonna be a very heavy truck, so and he parks on hills quite often. So we're gonna come out of the quick release and uh, we're gonna uh, bring a line out for the park and brake on the rear axle as well. Comes up like this. And like that. So I'm gonna leave enough room to get zip tied to the, the other stuff. So we'll go right there. I use these to cut them. They're just actual hose cutters for rubber hose, but it gives me a nice, nice clean cut every time. And our nut, ferrule, and the insert. Slide that in. Make sure it's in all the way. The suspension is all finished up, tightened up, and we're happy with it. Airbags are in. I have to get new nuts for the bottom of the airbags. They are half inch 20. Uh, they're a fine thread. I want to get some nylocks. I need to get new bolts because I only had grade 5, 3 8, so this that, that length. So I need to get eight grade 8 bolts for the airbags. I'm taking this as a thread chaser, not a tap, but a thread chaser. All it's meant to do is just... Go in and clean out the threads. Put a little bit of PB Blaster in the hole. I've already done these four. And that way the bolts go in nice and easy and we'll never seize them. But I'm getting ready to push this bushing out of the spider and watch back here. I literally just push it out with my fingers. Bushing's in the spider and then there's an O-ring between the two that keeps the grease sealed. But it is so thin, it literally just fell out. Grease out of there, that seal. Now I want to clean this all out. Make sure we get all the crud out of here. All right, so we've got this one driven in right to the edge. There's like a step right here. And then on the inside, this O-ring goes in here behind it to help seal this. All right, so you can see the bushings in here. And then back in here, let's see if we can turn the light on. There we go. The O ring seals up against the bushing right here. And then this portion right here will push against the O ring and seal against this surface. And then we'll have a seal on the other side. It's important to put these seals in correctly. We want this, the grease pushing against this, not past it. All right, so if, if we had grease leaking out, 
if you put it like this, the grease will easily overcome that garter spring and let the grease go past. If you're going the other way, as it pushes on it, it makes it tighter. So we want it in this way and we'll drive that in. This one's in and our grease fitting is in the middle of the tube. So these little holes that you see in the bushing in here, that would be something you'd want to line up if your grease fitting was right where the bushing is. Ours isn't, ours is right back here. It's past the, the bushing. So not really a big deal to us, but so this is the inside one. So now we want the seal this way. So as we grease it, as this gets full, we want it to come past this one on the inside. So we'll drive this seal in this way. We take a lot, take apart a lot of trucks that are backwards. All right, this goes inside the spider, so I don't want this season up. So we're gonna go ahead and put some never seize around that so nobody has to fight it like I did to get it out. I'm gonna go ahead and put some never seize in the holes for the bolts as well as on the bolts themselves. I clean these bolts up threads look good. I didn't see any reason to replace them. Can you start that? Looks good. Get that one started. Let's get it lined up good. I originally said I was going to put the new brake chambers on the front, but since changed my mind because the front is far easier to get to than the rear drive because of uh in fact you'll have two tires in there up here is pretty open So I don't want to put the S-cam in on this seal with nothing on it. So I'll just take a little bit of what's left in the grease tube when we take it out and uh, put it on the seal. And I'll do that on both seals, the inside and the outside. Inboard, outboard, I don't know what you call them. And then uh, we'll put some on the bushing itself. Be surprised how much grease is left in one of these tubes. The trick is getting it out of here without cutting your fingers up. Just a thin layer of grease back in here. Okay, so these have a right and a left. And most of the time they're stamped. And there's this rule about if you hold it in your hand, your thumb points one way or whatever, and I can never remember that. The idea is we don't want... We want this to be snug, but not tight. Look at that, she goes right in then. Space between here, that keeps the slack adjuster from going inside that tube and eating up that seal. And then you take up the slack with the smaller ones here. Come on, focus. And then the snap ring. All right, put a snap ring right here on the outside. Now this came with two different thickness of snap rings because you know you can shim this a little more if you wanted but uh i like to use a big heavy snap ring versus the little one so this part is done i had to fight to get them things off out of there like a glove man make sure they're even yes sir okay well i've uh Looked at the the brakes we we're gonna reuse and yeah well we're not reusing them so we're putting new brakes in all new hardware the, the rollers with the the grip on them go on the S cams the smooth ones go in the bushings these are 4515Q brakes now if you notice on here you have a large radius and a small. 
This is a small one. And then the, the stationary pivots are the big one. So on the small one, which would be these rollers, we have the big spring that goes right in the middle. Well, they don't put these in, so we have to put them in when you get the shoes. Just like so. All right, next thing we'll do is I just hook up these ones on this side because I think it's easiest. I just go ahead and hook the two together and lay them in place. Hang them like this. Take that hook, get it down here on that, and then and then it holds them in place. When the S cam's in the right position, all I, all I have to do is come down here, grab the orange one, bring it up, bring the shoe up, and turn this, which is hard to do with the camera in there, but look, it's it's there. Now all we have to do is get the rollers and put them in here. To put the rollers in, these pieces of spring go in here. So they need to go in like this. You usually push down, push down, get one in, squeeze those, and then get them into the retainers where they belong, like so. You just lift up, drop her in there. Make sure you're not on your wire, like so. Like I am. And just push it up in there. The next thing I want to do is start getting these fittings out of these brake chambers. We're replacing them with uh, hard plastic lines because these these hoses are all dry rotted and cracked and they're a real pain to get off of there. So this axle moves with you know, this stationary mount here, the only place we need a hose is from there to the valves. You know, that's all. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of these. I'll probably have about as much money in new fittings uh, if I don't have the right ones for compression than I will have making hoses. But at least we won't have to have hoses replaced again. Rear axle's in, and it is all set up. Uh, everything's snug down now. Airbags are in. Track bars in, um, our distance is the same. It's important to note that, you know, um, what we're doing here is we're setting the axle left to right. We're not setting, we're not adjusting the axle this way. That comes in alignment and that's done through these shims right here. So uh, the best thing to do would be to uh, have this thing aligned after we're done so that it doesn't eat tires and you know as, as good of a job as we've done measuring and preparing and all that we could still be off or it could have been off before for whatever reason so be a really good idea because that's how you get these lined up with the front axle so you get everything going the straight way because if you have this one and let's say it's going this way and this one's going this way you know the thing's fighting itself and feels like you're driving on marbles Next thing I want to do is get this drive shaft in because I want to put that in now because once I put the S-CAN tubes and the brake chambers in here, we start running out of room. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get that drive shaft in next. These are stuck. So the bushing, bushing came out with it. Man, I've got to get a new air hose. I keep saying that and I keep fixing this one. It's blown out on us how many times? So this attachment pushes uh, pushes everything out. And uh, if you flip it around this way, that's what drives your bushings. So you would drive the bushing in that way, and then this part stops you flush. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't like it. I'm replacing these brake chambers, so 
innocence fighting them and nuts along there and then clean it up it'll be a lot easier to saw the way it's got to come apart anyway not to mention the pins are stuck in the slack of this too Whew. working on getting this torn apart because we're changing the um, uh, brake chambers we're going to a 30 30 so now we're going to have parking brake on the rear axle as well now the brake chambers that we're getting we're going to have this rod like this with this thread um, which you know is the same thread as this but the thing about it is uh, it's going to come with this standard 5 8 pin and obviously that's not the right size the uh these old Haldex manual adjusting slack adjusters come with 5 8 pins. So I got to take it apart, swap these over, which I really didn't want to do. And of course they're stuck. Um, this one was stuck in the fork and you can see how worn away it is. Um, but we got it out. And then this one was stuck in the brake chamber. You can see how it was seized here in the brake chamber and then worn where the fork was. This would have been a perfect opportunity to get rid of these manual slack adjuster and go to automatic. Um, automatic slack adjuster will have a lot of times a plunger. One model has a plunger here, so when you hit the brakes, it tries to adjust them. So this is a thread chaser. Oops, <laughs> thread dropper. Um, it is not a tap. It is only meant to clean out existing threads and all four of these I had to heat up to get out one of them broke off so I've been running them back and forth getting it cleaned up once I'm done I'll hose them all out with brake part cleaner and then uh, we'll put never seize in them so they're not a problem next time he's cleaning up the bolts for that so because they have some rust, so they'll be, you know, fit in there really tight. Let's see if we just fit that one. It's probably going easier, too. This is why it's important to clean the rust off. Because this one was seized up and the threads are damaged. Hold on, it's got to focus on that. Junker. Well, they didn't look like that before you cleaned it up. Nope. Guys tell me all the time I shouldn't do this because, you know, it could pull this in and snap and get my fingers and all that stuff. I mean, act like these hands have never had that done to them before. I mean, <laughs> not our first rodeo. I don't have a brake chamber on this, so be pretty easy. Famous last words. Yeah. Look at that. Almost all the way in my hand. Up against the lock. Now. I've been fishing around here. I'm like, man, what's wrong with that seal? There just isn't one. <laughs> I don't know where it would have went unless someone didn't put it in, which I suppose could have happened since uh, they didn't put all the other bushings in. I find that hard to believe, though. I mean, it was pretty greasy on this side, but I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe it fell out and I didn't see it, but, man, that grease was packed around there ever so perfectly flat. Wait for my air compressor to shut off. I was using the air hammer to get them out and I forgot that the air compressor was turned off. So while I'm waiting, I figure out, I'll just go ahead and grease that drive shaft. So I got the front U joint. There's two grease fittings. I always go to both grease fittings and turn it a few times. And I started to do the slip yoke and come down here and 
it uh, it just started oozing out. I guess that's because we need something to hold it, something to stop it, like maybe the other grease fitting. So I figured uh, maybe if we put this grease fitting in, it might hold some grease. What do you think? Well, since we have the welder out and uh, he needs to get the races out of here, um, he has in the past just put a bead of weld around the race and it usually makes it shrink a little bit and then it'll it's easier to pound out sometimes it falls out but or it's easier to pound out because we've tried it without doing that and sometimes they're tough to get out so I thought we'd just go ahead and do that real quick um because it's getting near the end of the day and that way it'll already be done for when we get the new parts So if you run a bead on the inside of that race and you let it cool, it shrinks. That bead pulls it tighter and it makes it so much easier to get these out. It'd be easier if I had a longer punch, but I don't. But I'm barely tapping this, as you can see. Yeah, it's out. Not so much easier it is. Yeah, this one's yeah, it's out. Barely even touch it. It's just can do the other ones. Getting ready to put these races in, and there's some raised spots right here. I assume that's from somebody pounding the old races out. You see them here, and we had some uneven wear on the race that was in here so we don't want them to be up and i don't want to grind it so we're just going to take a punch everywhere that's a high spot we're just going to tap it down because i'd rather i'd rather that spot be down than up Depression would definitely be better than it sitting up a little bit right here. Because that would be enough to keep the race from sitting flat. And we don't want that. Because it has to sit right up against this because it's this a machine surface that's supposed to be uh, parallel to the other one to keep that drum run true. Alright, so that's. I think we'll be all right there. All right, let's get a race. Oh, yeah. Yep, we are flat. Okay, so it's hard to video this while we're doing it, but in order to put them in, this is the, this is the old race, and I weld that ring on there, and it shrinks that race. So when you go to drive the new race in, it makes it really nice as a driver. Then I can lay a piece of metal across here and drive it in straight. Because they're already a little bit narrower because it shrunk. It works really well. Now we're going to put the bearing in and the seal. Alright, so we're using these Rev HD seals. I really like these because oops, um, they basically give you a new sealing surface they're kind of like the uh, uh, stem codes they're a two-piece seal so one rides inside of the other and this one just kind of sits on the spindle and this one stays on the hub and they spin inside each other so the seal is actually in here so when you go to put these in it's not uncommon if you pay attention here you see there's not a very deep lip for this to go in so we'll have some 
sticking out. So don't be deceived like I was the first time I put it in. I'm like, it's not the right seal. It is. It's just meant to fit fit many different situations, applications. So um, they also want you to put that lube that I dropped down here on the outside of this. It's supposed to, I guess, firm it up and make it even better seal. It looks like it's just some type of grease, but... set in there so kind of close by hand and then I'll and then I'll drive it in and one on the inside of here as well and I also put it on the uh, on the spindle itself so when we put it together Whatever smears off, at least we got some more to hopefully work out. Okay, we got the outside race pressed in as well, so now we can put this one on. slide in Make sure you put the locking tab up. Out. Torque yeah. procedure, according to the Meredith chart that I've got, says to take the inner nut and torque it to 200 initial let's see 200 okay go to 200 200 we'll spin it at full turn or two and then they want you to back it off a full turn Full turn and go to 50. Tighten it back up. Tell me to torque this to 50. Go to 50. There's 50. We'll double check it. And then they tell you to back off a quarter of a turn. Now the spec is this hub can move one to five thousandths end plate in and out this way. I find when if you go by their spec that says to back this off a quarter of a turn, then you end up with too much end play. I've never been able to do that, so I've only usually it will go about an eighth of a turn and spin it and then check. That's usually it right there. The next step is we put the lock plate on. The lock plate is a washer with a bunch of holes in it. And it's got a keyway that it goes into on the axle. You see it right there. So what it's designed to do is take this pin right here and lock it in place so your bearing preload can't change. You'll notice 
this isn't in the center of these two it's offset just a little bit and that comes in handy in cases where you're not quite on where you want to be you can flip this sometimes it'll put you right like that so your bearing, you don't have to adjust your bearing preload to accommodate that you can usually make it work really close okay then the next spec is that the outer jam nut this is what holds that lock plate in place and uh, backs it up so it can't come loose so this is the Meritor spec sheet and it says that for any drive axle that uses this type of locking plate uh, if your diameter outside diameter spindle is two and five eighths or greater that the torque spec on the outside jam nut is three to four hundred foot pounds I made a mistake here I read the wrong one um, the one above it so luckily I caught myself with the problem so I just had to uh, change out from the half inch torque wrench to third uh, three quarter torque wrench and go ahead and torque it to 400 foot pounds so make sure you always check your specs and you know be careful because this could have cost me an awful lot of work or worse if I hadn't caught it you know it's possible that jam nut could have come loose some of these have that lock plate in there but instead of having those pins they have like a washer that bends up on the sides just to hold the nut in place that's it now we can clean up the hub face right here clean up these threads which I forgot to do and put our axle on slide our axles put our axle gasket on and slide the axle in We cleaned up the hub face and put a gasket on, cleaned up the axle, slid it in, put our wedges in, lock washers and nuts, and I found so far three nuts that were completely stripped out. There's nothing, nothing left for threads on them. They have been off a time or two, so let's see how many more there are that we need to replace, but let's go ahead and get this done. I want to get these axles in so we can start filling with gear oil because I like to fill the gear oil, uh, roll the hubs every so often and keep filling it as I'm doing other work. Put the new chambers on and, uh, you know, these are your bargain average cheapo brake chambers. So in order to measure for the length, I need to cage this parking spring. So the way these things work is with the absence of air, there's a spring in here that <clears throat> you should never try and take that apart because there's a spring in there. So that spring is, with the absence of air, it's putting pressure against the slack adjuster and applying the brakes. So when you put air into this chamber behind the diaphragm, it compresses that spring and releases the parking brake. So I've got that cage with this bolt in the back, so it's taking the place of air right now. And I've got the, the rod measured so I can cut it off. I always thread my jam nut all the way down so that after I cut this, I can run the jam nut over the edge of it and clean the threads up if I need it. run this over the edge of it and that will clean up the cut we just made so that the, the fork that we're going to put on will go on easier because we got to change the fork over we're not using the one that came with it
That would be a good sponsor. Mm. Yeah, you buy so nothing. Lord, I buy a lot of their paint. Mm -hmm. Them and TV Blaster. Yeah. Okay, only three more to go. Hmm. <laughs> 